Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Today I have been playing as Wartox, the newest character addition to Don't Starve Together. Specifically, I wanted to see how Wartox fared as a Ruins Rusher. Now, the Ruins are one of the biggest challenges in the game for most characters, and Wartox is no different. However, with Wartox, I anticipated the Ruins being especially challenging. And here's why. Wartox relies on souls for sustenance, healing, and fast movement. That's three different things for an item that you can only carry 20 at a time. Food items only heal health and hunger for half the normal amounts, and any strategy relying on blue caps, which is the most readily available healing item in the caves, for health and hunger were going to be wildly inefficient. So Wartox was going to need a steady supply of souls to survive for any extended period of time in the ruins. Problem is, the only enemies inside the actual ruins are clockworks and shadow creatures, neither of which drop souls. So I gave it a shot and went straight for the ruins after a little surface prep work. The things I learned about Wartox in the ruins frankly startled me, and I want to share that info with you in this video. Now, I had originally intended this to be a playthrough with commentary, but unfortunately and inexplicably, my microphone audio started to distort massively as soon as we entered the ruins. Maybe it was proximity to the ancient gateway? I don't really know, but either way, the audio is not usable. So I'm going to take the opportunity to experiment with a new format for presenting gameplay, and I'll call it a narrated synopsis. Basically, I describe the gameplay and narrate through my thoughts and strategy through each step of the run, all the while describing what I discovered and trying my best not to cringe at some of the sketchy moments. So let's get started. Day one was incredibly lucky. I spawned into a world that basically put wood, gold, and spiders practically at my feet. I had a science machine prototyped in a third of a day. I was also very lucky with mole worms in our starter biome and was able to snag two right away for future moggles. Now, moggles are a great item for ruins diving with any character, but with war talks, they were pretty much essential, and you will see why very soon. Day two, we prototyped an alchemy engine. Again, very nice having the gold available right at the start. Uh, we also spent a little time fighting spiders. The main goal of this was to get silk for crafting nets. I wanted to craft two nets, and the reason was so that we could bring a stack of bees to the ruins with us. Carrying around live animals such as bees and butterflies with Wartox effectively allows him to carry more than the maximum amount of souls in his inventory, and I did not feel super confident with just carrying 20 souls into the ruins, especially since I was going to rely on them for hunger, health, and movement. Now, just from my travels above ground, I quickly figured out that between all the bees, spiders, butterflies, tall birds, and pigs, I was constantly surrounded by souls. And because of the availability of them, I realized I didn't have to be super conservative with using them. Even using souls to hop short distances added up to a massive amount of time saved, and time in the early game is rather precious. Around the end of day two, I found the Pig King and knocked down a couple pig houses for resources. During the day, pigs will be constantly hostile to Wartox, so doing this at night was much easier because I could fight the pigs one at a time. I wanted to get four large meat for two handbats, one to prototype, and one for right before we entered the ruins. Day three, I found my first beehive. For the sake of expediency, I used a torch to burn the bees out of their hive. I would have preferred to keep the hives intact, and probably would have done so in a longer playthrough, but for the sake of this run, it just seemed the easiest thing to do. Although, thinking about it now, I could have just hit the hives to aggro the bees and brought down a stack of killer bees instead. Oh well. Day 4 I found Chester! Yay! Useless for this run. I also smoked out a few more beehives and collected a full stack of 20 bees. I was also holding on to seeds in order to feed the bees in my inventory when their hunger got low. Day 5 I entered the caves, threw down our second alchemy engine, crafted a lantern, football helmet, and ham bat. I also got a stage rose. Easy 150 spools. Anyway, we set off in the caves and rather quickly found the blue mushroom biome. This is a good find because it's always connected to the mud biome, which leads to the ruins. Battlesks turned out to be an excellent source of souls along the way. Still in day five, I find the mud biome and start picking glowberries. And while I can see other sections of the biome on my map, I can't soul hop over because I can't actually see them. That's why we need Moggles so badly. It's basically the only way to soul hop any substantial distance at night, unless there is a light source where you are hopping. Also, in case you didn't know, Depths Worms will always be wet. So when picking mysterious flowers, you don't get a Depths Worm unless the flower is wet. Obviously everything will be wet during range, so this doesn't work then. 
I also stumbled across a big tentacle in the biome. If there is usually one in this biome, then it is probably one of the more convenient stops along the way to the ruins for topping off souls. And that is because every baby tentacle will also drop a soul. Basically a one-stop soul shop for war talks. And once you discover the atrium, which is typically close to the ruins, you can soul hop over, smack baby tentacles at the atrium entrance for souls basically any time. Alright, around the top of day 6, I start to see some lichen which is an indication that we're getting close. Finally, I see a wet, mysterious plant. I kill the depths worm, get my first glowberry, throw down my final alchemy engine, and craft my moggles. That left me with one gold, but I decided I wanted a luxury pickaxe, so I doubled back for a moment to mine a stalagmite for one more gold piece. I also decided to smack some tentacles to top off my hunger. This made me insane, which I would basically be for the remainder of the run. Time to start killing shadow creatures! In a moment of pure distraction, I gave a free hit to a depth worm. Yeah. Then the nightmare phase began, and I discovered my new soul salvation, Shadow Monkeys. While wearing the Moggles, I was able to lure one to two of them over at a time in order to harvest them for food, nightmare fuel, and of course, souls. The fact that these guys are typically right at the entrance to the ruins makes them one of the best sources of souls for ruins rushing, and I had honestly never considered them until that point. In general, with other characters, I typically just stay the hell away from them. I'm learning that dropping a soul on the ground takes much less time than the animation of most healing items, and can be done while running away. Very convenient. Also, slurpers. Super easy sources of souls. Turns out even the lichen biome has tons of baddies to smack around for soul replenishment. Finally, I reached the ruins at day 8. That's actually pretty good. Coming in strong with a full stack of bees, close to a full stack of souls. I get to work aggroing rooks, letting them bulldoze the broken clockworks. The only sketchy thing with using moggles for this part is a lack of armor. I really wish I had made a log suit before coming down here. Which is why I generally keep my mouse on the helmet in my inventory so I can quickly switch to it if I'm about to get hit. Interestingly enough, I took much less damage than I expected. I also wasn't doing a lot of direct fighting with the bishops, which is where my health usually takes a beating. Good thing too, considering we only brought down four pigskins for helmets. Most of my souls surprisingly went towards my hunger, and in that regard, it is pretty damn nice having a reliable and replenishable food supply that does not spoil. Also, this means Wartox is going to save a lot of time that would otherwise be spent gathering food and healing items, typically two separate considerations. Had an exciting moment where I effectively dodged a bishop's projectile with a well-timed soul hop. Now, in retrospect, I'm not sure that spending a soul to avoid 40 damage is worth it. Sure, it's 40 HP if you're wearing no armor, but with a football helm, that's only 8 HP. You could just as easily tank the bishop and use one soul to heal after two hits. Seems more efficient. But with boss fights where hits can potentially hurt a lot more, I can see the benefit to soul hopping as a form of kiting. Day 10, I found the set piece with the bishops guarding the fully constructed ancient pseudoscience station, but the nightmare phase had just started so I decided to double back to the monkeys, try to farm some souls while waiting for the nightmare phase to end. Turns out, this is a really excellent way to spend the nightmare phase, between the monkey biome and the ruins. I can't overstate how amazing shadow monkeys are for war talks. One monkey will drop a banana, a morsel, beard hair, a soul, and sometimes nightmare fuel. If you're already insane, you can just eat the raw morsels and not even worry about sanity loss. Moggles, again, are essential to this because without them, you can easily aggro too many monkeys and they will swarm you. I had a super sketchy moment when I returned to clear out the set piece. I thought the nightmare lights were done spawning creatures, but I was so wrong. Had to make a hasty retreat, my health got pretty low for a second, and I used up most of my souls to heal back up. Anyway, back to the bishops. I tried soul hopping to avoid a few attacks because my armor was starting to dwindle. The results were somewhat mixed. Whatever, I killed them. It's over. Now, unfortunately, I hadn't raided a ton of statues, so I didn't have a lot to crap besides a magic luminescence. So, I murdered half my bees, set back out to find more runes to raid. At this point, the soul hopping was amazing because I was able to hop right through trouble spots, straight past bishops, and quickly survey the rest of the ruins. Soon enough, I found some statues to mine, grabbed a handful of gems and thulacite. After that, I headed back to the station to construct one thulacite suit and three helmets. I would have loved to craft a club and a star collar staff, but unfortunately we didn't bring any living logs. After that, our work here was done, head back out, return topside on day 14 giving the pig king around a full stack of frazzled wires. There was still lots of stuff to clear out, but I had enough armor to see me through some of the early boss fights, and that magic luminescence, stack of nightmare fuel, gears, and purple gems were really going to come in handy as well. 
if I found some living logs, it was easy enough to run back down and craft more stuff. The first boss fight for which I really like having that star collar staff is the Ancient Guardian, and I can craft the staves on my way to that fight. All in all, War Talks exceeded my expectations in the ruins. The soul hopping accelerated the exploration significantly, and the mobs I had not thought to farm for souls turned out to be the most helpful, as in shadow monkeys, baby tentacles, slurpers. Had I not been stupid with the bishops, I might have been able to get away with not bringing the stack of bees down, but I'm glad I brought them, as I certainly used all of them. The one item I would never think to ruins dive without is the models. Being able to see clearly in the ruins and hop out of sketchy situations was the difference between life and death in a number of instances. I enjoyed the run, and I think the inconvenience of having to occasionally farm souls is much less than the work of bringing food and healing items with other players. That's it for the run. Since I already edited in the playthrough, what I'll do is post a link to the unlisted video in the description below. Feel free to watch the blow by blow, but be warned, the mic audio gets really bad about halfway through. Hope you enjoyed the video! Please let me know in the comments below if this is a format that you enjoy viewing, and if there are other aspects of playing as War Talks that you would like to see covered. I'm thinking of doing similar reviews of War Talks with the boss fights, but let me know if this is something that interests you. Thanks, and see you next time!